and participate in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And that creates a reminder for us right at the very beginning of our walk with Christ, Christ rose from the dead. And He's going to rise you too. Just like when we take part in the Lord's Supper each week, we remember and we proclaim Christ's death, but not just His death, but His resurrection. And we think, I'm going to live this week for Christ because I have hope. And that hope has inspired me, has changed me, and given me a reason to look for eternity. I think about this passage, and Randy had read this this morning, but I want to read it again. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50 through 58. It says, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at, la at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable had been clothed with the imperishable, and with the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. How are we going to stand firm? How are we going to continue doing the will of God? How are we going to know that our work for the Lord is going to make a difference? It's because we go back to the understanding Christ is victorious over sin and death and one day he's going to come back and fully consummate his victory over sin and death that we're going to be transformed and changed and be like him for eternity. That's why I love the resurrection story because it's a prelude to what, what's going to happen in our own lives for eternity. Last week I talked about the cross. And one of the things I wanted to do was to help you remember. I wanted you to experience the cross. I wanted you to be overwhelmed with logic, overwhelmed with emotion, overwhelmed with the commitment to God saying, I want to be a new person. I want to be saved in Christ. I want to be a person who's living for Jesus because I built the message to the cross in my life. Today, I want to do the same thing about the resurrection. Because anyone can die, but only the Son of God can rise on the third day, just as He has predicted and as the Holy Scriptures foreshadowed. And so in this, I'm going to read the account of the resurrection. And as I do so, I want you to do a few things. I want you to pray in your heart to God and say, you know what, I truly believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I want you to say, appreciate God and say, thank you for being victorious over sin and death in my life. And no longer are they the masters of my life, but righteousness and Jesus Christ are now reigning in my life. As, I, as you think about this, I want you to have hope in your life. I want you to think, you know what, the person I am today isn't who I have to be forever. I want to live for God, labor for God, knowing it's not going to be in vain. I'm going to stand firm and do God's will and be like Him because one day, one day, we will be like Him forever. In a twinkling of an eye, in an eye we are going to be changed and have bodies that will live forever with God. I want you to understand, just as God resurrected Jesus, He's going to do the same for you. And I want you to be firm in your faith. And the foundation of our faith is that Jesus is the Son of God. And the evidence He gives to prove that fact is the resurrection. That's what's going to keep us firm when Satan attacks us this upcoming year when we do His will. That's why we're going to labor on, because we know it's not going to be in vain. So listen... And just pray those things and listen and experience the resurrection as I read it. John chapter 20, verse 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, that he had said these things to her. Christ rose from the dead. I witness in everything. And he made known that he was going to return not only to his Father and his God, but to our Father and our God. And he is our Father and he is our God because Jesus made that allowable by rising from the dead. Be firm in your faith. Be fervent in your labor for the Lord. <clears throat> Be convicted that Jesus is the Son of God. Never forget that Jesus rose from the dead and has given, up, given you the hope that one day you too will rise from the dead as well and live with him for eternity. That's the greatest news on earth. <clears throat>